Hello everyone, we will continue the topic background jobs and in the previous video, we understood the importance of background jobs. Now we will proceed further. Whenever we will go for background jobs, two transaction codes will play a vital role. What is the first transaction code? S. M36 and the second transaction code is SM37. The full game in the background jobs is of these two transaction codes only. Now, with the help of SM36, you can schedule a background job. And after that, whenever we want to check the status of background job, we can always, always check through SM37. So full game in the background jobs is of these two transaction codes only. We will schedule through SM36 and we will check the status through SM37. If I will show you in the system as of now, whenever we will start with practical part, these transaction codes will play a vital role. So SM36, it is clearly saying it is for defining the background job. Now, if I will go for SM37, so we can check the status of background job through SM37. And you can see we are able to see so many status. Whenever we will do the practical, we will go for all these things. Now we will proceed further. Now, next is what is the classification of background jobs? So background jobs are classified into three categories. Whenever we will create a background job, whenever we will define a background job through SM36, we need to always, always classify the job. And it is extremely important because based upon classification only, the system will decide the priority of your job background job so background jobs are classified into three categories first one is class a which are high priority jobs class b which are medium priority jobs and class c which are low priority jobs Whenever we will define a job, yes, we need to decide, yes, this particular job will be in which category. It is in class A, class B or class C. Class A are high priority job, class B medium priority job and class C low priority jobs. Now, what is the meaning of class A. Word itself is saying, yes, they are high priority job. So whenever you have urgent or critical task, suppose you have some program which is running in the background, but that program must, must run on that particular time. Yes. So at that time, yes, we will always, always go for class a category because we have sometimes very urgent or crucial tasks or crucial programs are there. So we will always put them in class A category. So some tasks are urgent or critical and then we will give them class A priority job. What is the advantage of class A priority job? Whenever you will go for class A, system will always, always reserve the background work processes for those jobs. 
you all know during the introduction of sap i covered yes ultimately whatever you are doing it is handled through work process work process word itself is saying ultimately your work is done by what work process so whenever you will go for class a job whenever you will give the priority as class a system will reserve system will reserve one or more background processes and yes those processes will be assigned to the jobs which has the category class a now after that we have class b once you are class a jobs completed after that yes system will go for class b jobs when system will run in the background and once class a and class b category are over system will go for class c suppose i am saying we have five processes five work processes are available and suppose we have five jobs with class a priority so at that time yes system will firstly firstly run the class a jobs after that system will come on to class b jobs and after that system will go for class c because ultimately it's a game of work process if work process is not available at that point of time yes how how that particular background job will run at that point of time so whenever the work process will firstly assign to the class a job then class b then class c that's why we have this kind of classification so whenever you think yes it is the most critical job or task based upon the customer input we will always always give the class a category and yes at that time yes we can assign one or more work processes for the class a category jobs now after that i will come on to the status of background jobs and these status will play a vital role because ultimately at the last it's a game of your status of the background job with the help of status only we can predict yes background job is ready background job is scheduled background job is active or background job is cancelled background job is finished at the last it is a game of your status only now the background jobs has six status what is first one scheduled what is second one released what is third one ready what is fourth one active what is fifth one finished and what is sixth one cancelled and you can check the status through sm37 transaction code and you can see we are able to say see same to same six status here also